Welcome to Tinkering by Night. My name is Alex, and today I will be talking about why I recently downsized to a relatively small desktop computer. Portability was my main motivation, but in the past, I have not been able to downsize as much as I'd like because downsizing required sacrifices and performance I was not willing to accept. This is a picture of the biggest and smallest sizes of desktop computers I've had over the years. The picture on the left is my custom-built ATX tower from 2002. The picture on the right is a very small computer fastened to the back of a computer monitor from a few years back. Unfortunately, this computer is so small that it must be built with laptop components. Laptops have always contained low power components in the name of reducing heat production. I've always liked the idea of a small computer, but up until recently, you have had to make sacrifices when going small. Let's explore why and the extent of how small you can go while making zero sacrifices in performance. First, I will talk about parts we can eliminate over desktop computers of yesteryear. As you can see, this computer has four external bay peripherals. Starting from the top, we have a bay panel for front USB and sound connections. They were great at the time, but now all modern cases have these built in, and they are much smaller than the panel you see here. Next, we have a DVD-ROM drive. Although still in use today, almost all software is available as a download, and thus we can eliminate ever needing a DVD-ROM drive. Next, we have a CD-RW drive, also known as a CD burner. When hard drives were measured in gigabytes and before USB flash drives, 700 megabyte storage disks that cost next to nothing were awesome. But just like the compact disk itself, they have become obsolete. Finally, we have a 3.5 inch floppy drive. Even in 2002, these were going out of style, but my school still used them. This is a picture of the inside of the computer. You can see that the drives up front we've decided to eliminate can save quite a bit of space. The remaining two drives you see are five and a quarter inch hard drives. Luckily, storage drives have gotten a lot smaller over the years, and I'll be using those types. Eliminating those four devices is all good and well, but we are not finished yet. There are more devices we can eliminate. The bottom three expansion cards in this picture are all obsolete. This is great because these are the expansion slots you will lose when you downsize to a smaller board. From the top, we have a wired network card. These have been built into every motherboard for at least a decade. Next is a sound card. Much like the network card, these are now built in every motherboard. Lastly, we have a TV tuner. I used it as a DVR before TiVo made the DVR a household fixture. All in all, we've eliminated four front bay devices and all the expansion cards with the exception of the video card. These three motherboards you see in this picture are the three most common sizes available for custom desktop PC builds. Over the first 17 years of building custom desktop computers, I've solely stuck to full-size ATX boards. Although the two smaller form factors have existed for nearly two decades, the best performing boards were only available in their full-size counterparts. This all started to change a few years ago as market forces demanded performance parts in smaller bodies. In 2016, I finally felt that I could get everything I wanted in a micro ATX board. This would finally allow me to reduce my overall system size. Here you can see the inside of the micro ATX system I downsized to in 2016. Earlier this year, I found a good deal on a used Intel 8th generation system in a mini ITX form factor. 
I feel this has very recently become the smallest size of motherboards you can get without sacrificing performance. This would now allow me to shrink my system even further to a size I feel is literally a desktop system rather than a big metal box you place on the floor below your table. Back to the previous picture, we see how snug the board is inside the case. Now here it is with the new board. The mini ITX is certainly much smaller than a micro ATX. Once again, from this to this. After much research, I settled on the Silverstone SG13 for the mini ITX build. There are many mini ITX cases available, but most of the offerings are either quite large, too small for my needs, too small it would require me to buy a small form factor power supply, or was just downright too expensive. As you can see, this case is quite a bit smaller than my last case. And remember, my last case was already much smaller than the full-size ATX cases I've had to use in the past. Needless to say, the SG13 is tiny compared to what I used even five years ago. As you can see, many ITX boards fit along the floor of the case. A low profile heatsink must be used because the power supply sits only a few inches above the motherboard. This case supports either a 14 centimeter or 12 centimeter front case fan. However, as you can see, I ran into some problems with a 14 centimeter fan. If you install a 14 centimeter case fan, there is no way the drive tray can fasten into place. For this reason, I had to use a smaller 12 centimeter front case fan. I also ran into another problem with the drive tray. The drive tray has a big metal and somewhat useless lip which interferes with the video card. This case supports fastening one 2.5 inch drive to the floor. If you have one or none, you can forego this tray entirely. I have two such drives, so this isn't an option for me. As you can see, I decided on the only free solution, case modification. Now with the lip out of the way, all the components fit snugly into place. As I mentioned at the top of the video, my main motivation for shrinking my system was to gain portability. For a long time, I've had two computer setups in my house. Maintaining two systems is time-consuming. I figured it'd be nice if I could just move one system from room to room, as many do with laptops. With this newest system in hand, I can now easily accomplish this feat. There are only five rear plugs to attach and reattach. The small size of the system makes it super easy to transport from one keyboard mouse display set up in one room to the other. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, write them below and I will read and respond.